Hello everyone, and welcome to Hashi Talk Vietnam 2022. My name is Tommy. I'm happy to be part of the event and even better as I'm the first speaker. So the talk today is about coded image and how to create them. So let's walk through the agenda a bit. I will give a bit of intro about my company and myself. Then we move to the next part where we get to understand what exactly is the golden image and why we need to use it. After that, we go back in time and see how we provision the infrastructure previously and how we do it now. And last but not least, I will talk about the current use case and small demo. Sounds good. Let's get right to it. So we are LiveOp and Wingo or LV. We based in US, Singapore, China, and many other countries. You might wonder why the name is quite long. It's because we are two different companies previously. We are we have merged into one big entity since October, and a new branding is in the making. So what exactly what we are doing? We are the mobile app and a game growth platform and target user acquisition, engagement, monetization, and analytics. Everything you need for global app growth, LV is your one-stop shop for programmatic user acquisition and re-engagement. So let's join us and reach a global audience and start wrapping the best users to your app today. A bit about myself, my name is Tommy, Tommy Nguyen. I'm based in Singapore. I can describe myself as a person who loves to try new things and of course Hashikop fit right into my category. I also work on many projects related to communities and the players. So what exactly is golden image? A golden image is a template for uh, a virtual machine, virtual desktop, server, or hard disk drive. A golden image may also be referred to as a clone image, master image, or a base image. There are at least three benefits on why we should have golden image or why we should use golden image. It's immutability, time saving, and scalability. In software engineering, an immutable object is an object whose state cannot be modified after it is created. It's the same case for golden image. By ensuring the immutability or consistency, the golden image becomes a source of truth and help push confidence for any downstream jobs. We can say that we provision one or 10 or 100 instances, all of them are identical. The use of golden images can save time by eliminating the need for repetitive configuration changes and performance tricks. Another area that golden image could help is scalability. If you can ensure that you have a single source of proof and everything you create based on that source are the same, then high scalability become much more achievable. Previously, without any configuration management tool, the administrator would need to repeat the whole setup process over and over again for many servers, instance. But what happened if he or she forget to run just one small step or making a typo or provision a lot of instances at the same time? Are those instances exactly the same? Or any error happen along the line, and then the administrator need to do it again. To solve the previous problems, certain tools have been introduced and widely adopted by many organizations. For example, with Ansible, the administrator now has the ability to compile all the provisioning steps into a so-called playbook. So that it's reusable, it's shareable. However, one problem that we have here is how do we make sure Ansible always run successfully when provisioning an instance? 
what about all the dependencies? Say, as people need to reach out to vote to a AWS secret manager to retrieve a secret. What if it fails to get a secret? Does it mean any subsequent step will fail as well? What if Ansible fail to connect to an instance? Usually, you need to connect like uh, with SSH to run the playbook. Uh, how about now? I'm sure that you have heard of um, Docker containerization which is a trending movement these days to have so scaling issues and configuration management. Um, but what about a hybrid infrastructure when we use both container and non-container? Um, do we really want to keep managing them separately? With Packer, we can combine all the steps into a conversion file. Uh, then we can execute it to produce a finalized output. It also support multi-platform output. So no, no matter what you are using, so no matter what you are using, or uh, where you are, either AWS, Google Cloud, Bimeto, Docker, it should just work. This is an in-depth look on how to structure projects. Uh, and steps when using Packer. You see a concern of base image here. Um, so how exactly is, is it different from the golden image that we are talking about now? We will see in the next session. Here in Lifab and Bongo, we embrace the infrastructure scope philosophy to make sure that not just the visitors logic but the infrastructure provisioning should be as transparent as possible as well. So that's why we choose uh, Packer as part of the CICD pipeline and to let it complement other components. In this setup, you see how Packer integrates with the rest of the tools. On the left side, it retrieves the necessary secret from Vault it downloads the Ansible playbook and use it for provisioning. It, its output will be an input for Terraform to deploy the app to dev, to QA, to production environments. Um, this is how Packer is designed. How Packer is designed. Um, as a backbone of the architecture, uh, HCL or HashiCorp configuration language now replaces JSON as the default language to configure Packer. So whatever you write in Terraform, now you can use pretty much the same syntax in Packer as well. And um, communicator, communicator by its name is the mechanism for Packer to um, connect to the instance, upload files, execute scripts. Um, next one is data source. Uh, where Packer will use data source to get additional data for bidding process, such as uh, retrieve the secret and so on. And builders. Builder are uh, responsible for creating machines and generating image for various, for various platform. Provisioners, provisioner configure the machine image after putting. Common use case for provisioners include install packages, uh, patch the kernel, uh, create user, uh, downloading the application code. Uh, post processors are optional and it can be used to upload artifacts, replicate or more. Um, the great thing about Packer architecture is um, there are a lot of third party component that you can include. So it's more like plug and play. So how do we use Packer in LV? Uh, of course, we use Packer to build image. Uh, currently, we use Packer to build image for workload on uh, EC2 instance, such as uh, Kafka, and we use it to build um, the AMI for the Kubernetes node as well. 
this is the code structure. Uh, this is how we structure the, the packer code for now. We try to split the components into the files where it makes sense. For example, you see here we have base file, Kafka file, plugin, Terraform variables. Base file is where we keep the code to build the base image. Kafka is where we define the step to build a Kafka image on top of the base image. Plugins uh, is where we define the um, any required plugin, any third party plugin that we require for the build for the build process. And Terraform.tf, we have a small Terraform script to actually um, model our unit tests and variables. Uh, it's a is the place to store any variables that we need for the build process. Um, this is how uh, we build the base image. Basically, we just based on the Ubuntu AMI image. And then the only thing else that we add there is the Ansible package. So it's quite straightforward. Um, next part is the uh, Kafka. Uh, so this is this is how we build a Kafka image. So basically, basically we base on the base image we built in the last step, and then we add more additional configuration on top of it. So for example, here you see it's a dynamic block. Um, we used to add the extra volumes to the instance, and an uh, additional command that we use to provisioning it. Uh, next part is where we define the required plugin. So in this particular case, we only uh, use um, we, we only use Amazon. So this is the only thing that we include in this file. Um, and how we define the variables. Um, this is one interesting use case you can see as well. With the help from the Amazon plugin, we can actually connect to secret manager and download the secret here, and then put it as the either as a as a as a variable or as an environment variable. Um, this is a little experiment that we do uh, when we implement Kafka. Um, as you see here, when we configure or we install the instance. Uh, if we do it in a manual way, it will take us maybe one hour to finish. With the configuration management, uh, with Ansible, then uh, it finished around in 20 minutes. But of course, we can run the instance in uh, parallel as well. We packed it, since everything is packed into one image already. Um, so it's really fast. It just takes maybe one minute or even shorter than that. So this is the um, small demo. Uh, you guys can scan the QR code to um, get to the source of the video if it is too small for you. So basically, uh, yeah, so just run the Becca build. And for the step, uh, what exactly does Becca do? That is, it will spin up the EC2 instance. Um, and then download the Ansible playbook in there. And then run any step that we define in the Ansible playbook. And then at the end uh, of the step, it will uh, terminate the instance. And then upload the AMI to AWS for further uses. So the reason because so the reason why packers are much faster than the rest of the uh, the way that we provision instance like I mentioned in last step is because everything is done in a build step so that uh, when we spin up the instance there's no need to there's nothing else to run it just spin up the instance maybe replace one or two variables uh, and that's it. 
and it's even better if we have the full, full fully functional CI/CD pipeline in this case. Well. So any application version can be matched with uh, one AMI version. So this, in this particular case, then ANSI will take, um, if I remember correctly, it's eight, eight minutes. Eight minutes to finish. Yeah. So we are reaching like the final step already. I think I'm also a bit out of time. Um, if there's any questions, please uh, scan a QR or click on the link uh, to uh, like put your questions there and I will answer when I receive it. Uh, also, we are hiring. Uh, feel free to scan the QR code to uh, get to know more about the role. Uh, there are many open roles now in Beijing, in Singapore, and in, um, in US as well. So thank you.